This video has two parts about ancestor veneration in the Bible. For exclusive content, consider becoming a member. I thought about it, instant download. Ancestor veneration is actually in the Bible. Remember when Yahshua, Jesus, went on the mountain? And who did he commune with? Two dead people, the prophet Elijah and Moses. But he went on the mountain and he communed with them. But isn't that something that they say we should not do? We should not commune with spirits, specifically here with Leviticus. And I've done several videos about Leviticus. Now, to elaborate on the topic of our ancestry and being able to tap into those angelic realms to commune with our ancestors that went before us, accumulated knowledge, they want us to cut off our access to our ancestors. Why would that be? Why is that so powerful? They have knowledge. They have wisdom from previous generations. Imagine if this was a stock, if our ancestors were stock, bond, bond or stock, stocks or bonds, that it grows with time, like a wine. It grows in its value over time. So imagine if we had access to our ancestors that their wisdom and their knowledge and their spiritual strength and practices only grows with time and practice, that we have access to that. So they demonized us communicating with our ancestors because they know how powerful we are. If we have access to our ancient knowledge, our spiritual base, our spiritual practices, our ancestors, and even the richness of the spirits of the land, we will be unstoppable. In order for it to take over a people, you have to indoctrinate them. So first you gotta strip them of whatever spiritual practices and food, can, those go together, you have to strip them of those. When they would come into these villages, they would sometimes just come by force or either they would befriend the people of that land and demonize all of their practices. What have they done? Now, we are not supposed to commune, ask questions, dream about them, uh, recognize signs and omens. All of this stuff isn't true. If you go to the original text and the original translation of these different practices, you realize that these are the practices that the children of Israel would do. And even furthermore, we are all ancestors. We are ancestors of the children of Israel. So why are we cut off from our practices? Why are we cut off from our bloodline? They say there's power in the blood. That is, it doesn't mean you have to cut yourself. What it means is that it's power in the bloodline. If I have access to my bloodline, my ancestors, I don't have to know my DNA. You know, I'm referring to symbolically, if I know my ancestral bloodline, meaning that I don't have to know who my cousin was, my grandmother, I have that access all around me. All I have to do is just go and pray and seek and be open to receive those messages. They don't want you to know this. They want to strip you of your power because if you are powerless, they are more powerful. But we are more powerful the more that we come together and the more that we tap into our spiritual practices and continue them. The thing about the land and the reason why the land was so important to our ancestors is because of the, the energies, the, the elementals that they will connect to. All of those have spirits with them. You would say energies or spirits, they really are interchangeable. Energy would be more of a scientific way, how to explain these entities, and spirits will be another way. But these are all the same. When I come into a space, you can feel the energy, you can feel the spirit, you can feel what is going on in the atmosphere. So don't be afraid to continue your studies. We don't have to do a human sacrifice to connect with our ancestors and know they're not demons. I got a question about Isaiah 8, 19 through 20, and as well, 2 Chronicles 33. These scriptures, they're referring to Ammonite and Canaanite gods. It was forbidden, um, like Molech, that required a child sacrifice. And that's what is condemnable. In 2 Chronicles, we have Manasseh, that he resurrected the altars unto Baal of Aseroth, and that required, once again, a form of necromancy that required a child sacrifice. The text is, uh, made his sons pass through the fire. So that is, once again, related to Leviticus 19, uh, where passing through the fire, don't have your children, your daughters, or your sons pass through the fire. Is specifically because of this practice that required passing through the fire is like they would sacrifice their child and then burn them almost like what Abraham was going to do in the Old Testament let's just keep it 100 what was he going to do um, as far as what ancestors are different than the Shadim 
Shadim or Shadim those are demons. Those are like half animal, half human, or half two creatures. In, in short, that neither one of these scriptures are related to ancestor veneration. Now they will use these to condemn people's ancestors, like connecting to the ancestors because of the wisdom and the knowledge. You know, you could connect to your, your ancestors to gain wisdom from those that have passed on. You can find out more about divination in the Bible with my ebook. Soon to come to paperback.